What's going on YouTube? It's your guy Darren, the Bowtie Fragrance Guy, and I love looking good and smelling amazing. On today's video, I'm going to be talking about one of my favorite scents from the House of Bond number nine, and that is the fragrance called Scent of Peace. If you're a guy out there and you love hearing about fragrance related content and also content that relates to style, how you can always be looking and smelling your best each and every day, I welcome you to go ahead and click on the subscribe button. And while you're at it, go ahead and click on the bell icon as well. That way you get notified every time I release new content on the channel. So if you guys are ready to hear about my take on Bond number no. 9 Scent of Peace, you know the routine, keep it locked right here. All right, guys, we're back. Thank you so much for keeping it tuned in. Let's go ahead and jump right into talking about Bond number no. 9's Scent of Peace. This is the bottle. I'm pretty good, sure you guys have seen this before, and I love this bottle because, of course, just like me, it is rocking a nice bow tie. Love that small detail on the bottle presentation of this scent. Oh, man, this stuff smells so good. Let's go ahead and give it a spray, and we'll get into talking about exactly what this thing smells like. Now, guys, a lot of people compare this fragrance to Creed Aventus, and I've talked about it before, but I'll say it again. This fragrance does have some slight similarities to Aventus, but it's definitely not a clone. I almost venture to even say it maybe wasn't even inspired so much by Creed Aventus, because to me, it's not that close. I would only say maybe about 50% similarity between the two scents. So that's just my take on that as it relates to the whole Creed Aventus thing and how I feel about it. Now, this fragrance opens up with a very, very bright uh, bergamot and citrus combination that you do get from pineapple. So it opens up, you get that whole freshness that is provided from the bergamot and of course the fruity this comes from the note of pineapple. Now as it starts to really transition to the heart, you also start to get a note of grapefruit and also currant buds. Now currant buds of course is also provides somewhat of a fruitiness uh, that you're going to get from uh, the current buds and it works really really well with the the pineapple so it creates this kind of fruity accord um, with the pineapple and the grapefruit so it's a really really nice fresh vibrant citrusy and fruity opening on the fragrance edges. and even and you even get that fruitiness as you transition to the heart of the scent now in the heart as well you uh, you pick up start to pick up some juniper berry and of course, if you guys have not heard it before, juniper berry is used to make gin. So there's almost this, a lot of times it creates this almost astringent um, type vibe that you get from juniper berry. It's very, very sharp. So it provides a sharpness to this scent as you kind of transition in the heart. Uh, but again, I think it provides a good contrast for the scent because it keeps it from being overly fruity. Uh, when you have, again, all the notes that I've already talked about, you got uh, the currant buds, you have grapefruit, you have pineapple, all these fruitier notes, the juniper berry kind of helps to heap, keep it from going too fruity. So again, that astringent kind of sharpness that comes in from juniper berry, I think is very, very well used and very well needed in this scent, again, to keep it from being overly uh, fruity. Now, as you start to get into the dry down of this scent, you have a very woody, dry down and you do get a slight bit of smokiness and earthiness that comes from the use of vetiver and i guess again the pineapple you do have the black currant in aventus in the current buds and this and then of course that slight smokiness you get from the vetiver to me is what kind of creates um, and draws the comparison to aventus because of those notes um, but again i will just humbly say it's not definitely not a clone so it's not uh, like if you have Creed Aventus, it wouldn't be worth it to check this one out as well because they are definitely uh, fragrances that are different enough that it will still, it could potentially still warrant a purchase. So again, you get a very, very woody, dry woodiness from cedar wood, a little bit of earthiness and smokiness from the vetiver on the dry down. But all in all, it all works together to make a really, 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 really nice scent. This scent is relatively playful, but I will tell you right now, as I've said before, 
This is definitely in my top three Bond Number no. 9 fragrances, and it is the most complimented Bond Number no. 9 scent that I have. As far as the performance on this fragrance, you kind of get about that seven and a half, eight and a half hour mark. It kind of varies and changes up depending on the time of year that I wear it, honestly. But for the most part, the longevity falls between the seven and a half to an eight and a half hour mark. This fragrance is a great projecting fragrance. For the first two and a half to three hours, it really, really projects about two and a half to three feet off of my skin. At the three, about, at about the three hour uh, mark, it does really start to come closer to the skin. But again, as I said before, it does give you a full day's worth of wear as it relates to the overall longevity. So it gets great marks in the performance category. Now, as far as price, I mean, you know, Bond Number 9 fragrances are very, very expensive if you're going to buy them uh, from Bond Number 9's website. But there are some discounted sites, a few discounted sites that do carry Bond Number 9 fragrances. And I think if you can pick this fragrance up for, and this size bottle, which is the 3.3 ounce 100 ml bottle, it does come in a 50 as well. But if you can pick the big bottle up for under 200 bucks, I think that is an awesome value for this scent because it is really, really, really good in my humble opinion. Now, as it pertains to seasons, I like to always talk about when you can wear it. This is signature scent worthy. Honestly, guys, you can wear this from summer all the way up into the winter months because um, it's just a really versatile kind of mass appeal and easy to wear scent. Now, of all the seasons, I think winter is probably the least favorable time. But again, if you're in an office uh, environment, a climate controlled environment, it's still going to work well in the winter as well. But again, signature scent worthy. You can wear this fragrance year round and you're going to be smelling like a million bucks. All right, guys, that's it. That's my time. I just wanted to come and give you my quick take on one of my favorite fragrances from Bond Number 9, which is this one, The Scent of Peace. I always appreciate you guys taking the time out to watch these videos because, of course, I know you could have been anywhere else in the world, but you're right here with me and you took the time to watch this video, and I sincerely appreciate that. And don't forget to take the time to like, comment, and subscribe, and share these videos out to some other folks that you think could use this information or find me entertaining because I'm your main man, Darian, the Voltaire Fragrance Guy. I love to look good, and of course, I love to smell amazing. So until next time, guys, keep looking good. Keep smelling even better. I'll catch you on the flip side. Peace.